All right, motherfuckers. That right there was Grief Collector with Corridors and Winter Sick. Let's call these motherfuckers up right the fuck now and see what the fuck is going on in their world, man. What's going on, man? All right, so you guys are live right now on the Zach Moonshine Show with Metal Devastation fucking radio. Tell us, man, what is going on in the world of Grief Collector? Well, well you- I mean, first and foremost, we goddamn slay it, period, in the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> God damn right, dude. Man, this record is uh I don't even know how to how to begin, man. It's fucking it's just awesome, dude. Everything about it. We appreciate that. Yeah, it uh you know, it was, it's been a long road, you know, since the first uh little, you know, EP that we put out and you know, trying to obviously top ourselves on that and try to you know expand our horizons and and try to do something a little different on this album and i think we kind of accomplished that you know definitely definitely so tell us how did this whole thing come together like how did you guys put this whole grief collector thing together you know it, it's one of those things that you know um matt and i have been friends for quite a long time you know going on 20 years now and um yeah after a few failed bands that uh i have had and you know kind of uh talking with him after those bands had ended you know kind of just really sick of just wanting to start another band again so you know i really just contacted him and and asked him if he wanted to write a record just him and i you know him and i would just play on everything and just do it ourselves and put it out and you know see what would happen you know and after we got done writing everything you know we didn't have any vocalists that uh you know i thought would really give the album what it needed to you know really flourish and uh you know i realized one day that i was friends with rob on uh on social media so i just uh you know one of those things just kind of contacted him and you know see what he thought about maybe doing some work with us and you know and that's kind of how it all started (laughs) proves the old saying man you never know until you ask right yeah you know i was you know i've i never met rob before i'm you know i've been a fan for going on 30 years now and so i just thought you know what's the worst that could happen you know he could you know just not respond or think i was just some kooky fan or something but you know here we are you know finished our second album and starting to work on our third as we speak awesome man awesome yeah i gotta say man a huge fan myself of rob lowe as well man like i mean uh the candle mass stuff solitude eternus i mean come on dude like it's just epic man like in my opinion he's up there dude like rob you were up there with uh with with the other giants like dio halford all those guys man well thank you um I appreciate that, but you know we're all just fucking retards. <laughs> you fucking go out there, <laughs> fucking saying, you know, that's the whole thing. Um, wow, am I talking? Yes, I yeah, am. Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. All right, I can only see Brad. Oh, and that's not a bad thing because that sexy motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're. Yeah, we're just we're just doing this is just a strictly audio thing, so you're not you're, you are seeing correctly, Rob. But uh, yeah, you know. So, what so, you? so tell us, Robert. Uh, like, uh, what was your what was your um, how did you feel whenever you came into the grief collector position? Well, here's the thing. It's like Brad said, or you know, um, he sent me some shit and. Um, you know, honestly, I've said this a thousand times. You know, I got it. And I was like, all right. And then, bam. Son of a bitch, that's some cool-ass shit. <laughs> fucking do this. Fucking A. That's <laughs> right up my alley. Pa-pow. All right. So done. So, you know, after about 12 years, I got back, back to Brad and said, uh, yeah, you know, this is cool love what you're fucking doing man and bingo bam there it is hell yeah well uh can you tell us a little bit about some of these songs like uh give us a little bit of uh information like well like, what what are the what are these songs about what is 
what is the whole uh well you know the the first album you know the ep was pretty much focusing on the five stages of grief you know and each song kind of representing that stage of uh what you went through you know to get to finally hoping you know to be okay you know um but this new album is more focusing on you know you know how how your how your mind can really be you know your worst enemy and and it can also be your biggest savior you know it's really about how much control you really have of yourself and how much you know control you don't have you know there's there's certain times where you can find yourself you know in the deepest hole you know that you created yourself within your own mind and you know you are the one that can get you out of that and sometimes it's not as easy as people think it is and you know uh, a lot of tragedy has come from people getting lost in their own heads and um you know it's just kind of a journey of a lot of that and you know um the ins and outs of trying to you know tunnel your way through and you know hopefully get out at the end you know uh unscathed hell yeah man uh, i i know i would have to agree with brad on that i mean honestly yes we all go through the same goddamn bullshit day in day out we all do each and every one of us on the planet 5.2.80.30 million people <laughs> can do the same goddamn thing <laughs> but yeah it's true and we do we all live through that so i mean with um you know brad and matt um, created some incredible music and I was lucky enough to be able to open my face and go blah and put the words out there it's 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 always for somebody that can feel this and do it and I'm going to shut up now <laughs> <laughs> hell yeah man uh, you know I can't remember actually uh, who sent me the the promo for this record. I, I know it was a while back, uh, sometime this last year, I think. Um, but the the thing that grabbed me right off the bat was the album cover. Like that's, I mean, it's just it's awesome, man. Can you tell us a little bit about the like who did the art? <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, we have a, I have a friend uh, named Emily um, Unger um, that uh, I kind of worked with on that to, you know, it's kind of a concept of a couple different things that I had going as far as ideas went, but she definitely, you know, took it to another level and kind of made it come, you know, come to life. The funniest thing is, you know, we, we sent that, you know, in multiple versions to to the label and uh, you know they weren't very fond of it and even at the very end um really? you know i didn't think that they really even really wanted that as the cover and you know i kind of just um you know put our foot down and just said you know this is what we wanted to do and you know i think that at the end of the day they you know they saw our vision but initially that wasn't even going to end up being the album cover um but to me that really represents you know somebody walking into their own mind up the stairs into their own mind and um you know the graveyard represents a death and you know walking up the stairs into the light you know that's uh it, it, there's a lot of representation there and i i can't really see that album cover not being you know the album cover for this uh for this album it just it just seems like a no-brainer really yeah. well and if they knew the real story behind into the land, <laughs> right. that's a whole nother story but yeah you know um it it, it just call it, kind of all came really easy on this album actually it um you know we we found ourselves after the first ep really you know energized with what we did with robert on the first album and you know it, it wasn't very long i mean really from the time that we finished the album musically um till the time that it actually was released on petricor on the record label i mean it was less than six months yeah yeah that's that's cra i i can't believe that they didn't like the album cover or they didn't feel that that was like good for it like is it, it just it in cult i mean it, it to me it it looks like what it sounds like 
Yeah, well, it, 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 it encapsulates the whole theory behind what is going on with the music and the words and everything else. And I have to say this, Brad is genius, pert in conversation. I'm just going <laughs> to say it. <laughs> you know, it's just it's 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 nice having people on the same page. You know, you you know we're you know Robert and myself and our Matt. You know, we 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 think the same. You know, we we have the same uh, musical um, ideas and you know everything. You know, even in the studio, it was very simple, very easy. You know, it was really straight to the point. Uh, you know, there was not a lot of. Um, you know moments to where it, it felt like it was a chore it really just felt like we were just there to create something that felt organic and um you know it was really a, a really cool experience so i mean i i'm looking forward to doing it again so we're already matt and i are already starting to write the the third album you know we just finished our la, rehearsal last night so we we got a couple ideas going already so yeah, speaking of that, like the recording process for this, I, I know, I mean, uh, this was done during the pandemic, correct? Yeah, I mean, it it really was, you know, and but that's the thing with, you know, with Matt and I as, as um, you know, the core writers, you know, musically, um, we, we just send each other stuff back and forth, you know, people, you know, bands do it all the time, you know, we just email ideas and riffs and kind of put them together, but you know, my thing is being one of the core writers, uh, even for guitar stuff, which, you know, I do that as well, you know, I, but I don't play guitar. I, um, you know, I just come up with, uh, guitar riffs in my head and, and then just put them on my phone using my voice. And then he just, uh, transcribes them into guitar. So. Wow. Well, first and foremost, Matt is a fucking genius. Perk. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, I, we really got to give, you know, props to Matt because at the end of the day, you know, we're, you know, we're two guys from Minnesota, you know, the first, the first EP was, you know, written down my basement, you know, in my studio apartment, you know, I didn't even play the drums, you know, creating the songs, you know, I never even played those songs until I went to record them. So I never even knew how I was going to play them until I went into the studio and, you know, Matt hit play and I just made up some stuff. So, um, you know, Matt does all the, you know, he does all the guitars. He does all the bass. He does all the guitar solos. He mixes the the album. He tracks the album. He mastered the, you know, the first album. You know, we ended up sending it out. But at the end of the day, Matt does pretty much everything in his own studio other than the final mastering. So he does everything. Yeah fucking amen that is amazing man so so you actually you 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 like mouthed the fucking riffs over the phone and then he turned it into guitar how, how, i mean can you can you give us an example of like how that how that works <laughs> I, I, I mean, you know, as corny as it sounds, you know, and I'm almost, you know, a 50 year old man, but, you know, I, I, I'm not a drummer, like just a drummer, you know, I've, I, in every project I've ever been a part of, you know, I like to have my guitar ideas because I, I kind of, you know, I like to create more than just the drum beats. So, you know, I'll just come up with a riff, you know, I'll just think, okay, well, and I'll send it to Matt and then he'll just come up with a guitar up then I'll say no it'll be an octave down or that note's not right and then he'll just send it to me and then we'll go yeah that's how it works and then so I, I I'd say about 75 percent of the first album is written with mouth guitar and over half of the you know end delirium is written with mouth guitar by me so that is so cool, man. That that's kind of like uh, it reminds me of like Beavis and Butthead, you know, or uh, I mean, you know, like what just it, it really is. It's it's you know, it's on the verge of being you know comical when I you know I <laughs> I have a whole folder in my phone of just me you know I'm on my forklift at work you know just like oh something comes to me and I'll hit record you can hear like the beeping of my forklift in the background and I'm just like junk 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 yeah yeah but you know it, it it does the job and it you know that's that's how we we wrote during the pandemic too is just that we sent stuff back and forth and then we would piece the guitar you know 
uh, stuff together and create the song, and then you know Matt would uh, would uh, do it to a click track and then get it all tempoed out, and then you know I drove to his house for the weekend, stayed there. It's about a two hour drive, and you know spent the weekend there and just hammered out the whole album, you know, and wrote the songs, you know, on my drum set um, as as it was happening. Uh, you know, because I don't, I don't, uh, I don't write anything on drums ahead of time. That is so cool, man. Yeah, you know, it, it, I mean, it makes me think. You know, like I, I know probably almost every metalhead out there probably understands that and knows because that's what we do. We sit around and you drink beer and you smoke weed and you just sit like da 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 da. And but like you guys actually did that and made songs out of it. That's really cool. No band has ever told me that in an interview to be honest Zom- yeah i mean i i really think it's a you know a unique way of doing it i'm sure you know bands probably have done it or whatever <laughs> but that's just you know that's it, it and i'm lucky enough to have matt as a partner to where you know i don't feel silly you know sending him these you know mouth guitar riffs and and he's he's a great enough guitar player where he can make those you know those sounds that i make into actual music i mean that that's a great partner to have so do you think that any of that will ever like see a release you know like demo uh tracks or something besides <laughs> you know that's funny because you know actually a couple days ago matt sent me this little thing from one of the songs uh, i believe it's our poisonous ways off of end uh in delirium uh he actually sent me a, a little link thing uh on facebook messenger uh that i sent him for the riff using my mouth and he thought maybe you know it'd be funny to post that on facebook of what it sounds like but you know i'm not sure i'm that confident yet but it's 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 comical in its own way but you know you know with social media it'd probably be you know eaten alive like a bunch of piranhas (laughs) right well (laughs) Speaking of the release, man, I, this thing is sold out already. Like, we can't even. Uh, is there going to be a, a reissue of this, or like, where can people go to buy it? Um, you know, I I wish it was sold out. I mean, not to my knowledge. I mean, um, I guess there's certain formats that are sold out. Um, you know, we we did release it on um, three different colored vinyls. We have the black, and then we have the the smoky gray and then we have a splattered red um but the the red and the gray are are strictly european um you know but uh i think they're still available at least the colored ones uh off of name palm which is our distributor um but i don't know about the black i think it might be sold out i'm not really sure but you know you can get the you know the cd the double cd on amazon and and some other uh sites Okay, yeah, because I was looking earlier, and uh, I was looking for the vinyl, actually, and I saw that uh, Napalm Records had it as uh, out of out of stock. And then yeah. I did see a couple... Well, uh, that's the whole thing. We decided that nobody should have this because it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sitting on about 200 copies at my house right now. <laughs> no shit? No, 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 we... Absolutely not. We, uh... You know, we yeah. We got you a, can uh, call or text Brad at <laughs> right. <laughs> um. Yeah. I mean, I, I I don't honestly know, and I was actually looking into that myself because I know, uh, you know, quite a few people want the black, you know, just the standard vinyl. Um. But um, I'll definitely look into that for you, and I'll see what I can pull out. Hell yeah, man! That would be awesome, dude. I've got actually a bunch of people in the chat room right now talking to me, and they're asking about it. So uh, nice, yeah. Well, uh, tell hey to all the guys in the chat room, guys and ladies, and all that. Bam, bingo, and set with backers, <laughs> back asswards. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so so what's coming next for you guys? You got you're you're working on the new record. Uh, can you tell us anything about it? Can you tell them anything about it, Rob? I don't know. I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this straight up, straightforward. Period. Bam. End of conversation. Um, got a redneck fucking Texas. Fixing to be up there in Minnesota. Bam. Said it. Uh, dude. 
plain and goddamn simple. Music yeah, I mean, against ass. Brad, Matt, fucking do it. Kill it. Deliver it. And we're going to fucking... Oh, you want a third album? Bingo, bam. It's going to happen. And if you don't buy it now, it will be sold out. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I mean... I- there's not really a lot to tell you know it's in the in the beginning stages you know uh i think matt and i last night kind of completed what we think is going to be you know one of the songs you know we kind of record things piece it together listen back and you know kind of go well you know is it good enough is it okay is it you know monotonous you know we kind of just you know we're our own worst critics so um but i think you know I think we got one song done and partially a second one last night. So there's not really a lot to tell. I mean, um, you know, like I've said in a f- quite a few interviews, you know, I just want to make this clear. Like, we're not reinventing any wheel here. Like, we're not like, you know, we get all these things from these places and, you know, reviews and stuff, you know, and it's, it's, it's so comical. It's like, you know we pay homage to you know the bands that you know have influenced us you know candle mass and solitude and pentagram and you know all those those bands you know of that nature you know trouble you know yeah, no uh, no trouble pentagram you named it bro you know so we're not you know we're not trying to do something that you know is way out of the realm of what we think you know grief collector is you know you're going to hear a lot of classic sounds you're going to hear some more epic modern stuff you know but at the end of the day you know a lot of doom is is just that you know it's it's very less is more you know and and we we do what we do and and we're happy with that you know we always get a lot of comparisons to these bands and you know people like well it's already been done or Hello? Hello? I think I lost you guys. Writing, you know, because you you're always, always going to get critiqued about it. So, you know, after the, you know, the last album, you know, End Delirium, I just, you know, Matt and I are just like, we're just going to write what we write. We've had great reviews. We've had bad reviews. And at the end of the day, you know, look, Napalm black vinyl out of stock so that says it all right there yeah it does for sure man and dude, from, you know coming from a band of two guys you know plus robert but at the end of the day you know it's it, this is what we do you know this is this is the thing you know and um you know this is what we're going to continue to do and so two guys from minnesota writing albums down the basement you know of their house you know, and having one of the best doom singers on the planet, you know, uh, doing it with them. I mean, you can either like it or not. At the end of the day, it's hard to really, you know, uh, to knock it you know, because see, you got some great people doing some music. Thing. End of the day matters. We don't give a shit. Do what you do. You don't like it. You don't like it. Who cares? You know, we're just we're just being honest to what to what we feel is you know our style and you know we draw influence from so many things you know and you know we're we love death metal we love doom we love thrash we love old school 70s you know hard rock you know scorpions and all you know all that stuff so to write an album that's strictly you know what everybody in this realm is going to want is, is is damn near impossible and i don't really really want to do that i'm not writing for anybody else ever well and that's so. the whole point i mean you do that i mean you do what you love right period end of the day got it do it hell yeah man you mentioned uh pentagram and trouble and uh uh speaking of that uh, i enter- i interviewed uh bobby a couple months ago for uh his new band the limit and uh of course rest in peace eric wagner but man i you know uh when you mentioned those two bands together i was just thinking man what a cool fucking tour that would be oh absolutely you know i mean 
there, there's so many bands that, you know, that I wish I would have saw together. And, you know, there's so many, you know, you always have that dream lineup thing, you know, and, and there's always those bands and, and trouble would have been one of those, especially with Eric, you know, it's, it, that would have been for me, it would really would have, it would have been trouble, solitude, Eternus and candle mass. I mean, to me, those, <laughs> those, by, those bands right there, are are you know the quintessential bands of of that time you know it's it's you know it's unfortunate you know it's it's you always think you have more time you always think there's these people are going to be around you know well, circumstances you know happen uh, speaking of more time and i have to say this i was uh lucky enough to have the guys from trouble open for cmas a couple of times sweden blah 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 whatever but it was it was the vocalist from Warrior Soul. It wasn't Eric. A um, couple of weeks ago, you know, friends of mine are like, "Hey, they're going to be in Dallas, man! You should come out. Let's go." I'm like, "All right." Well, and then like a week later, he's dead. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's man. it's uh, never. It's one of those I, I met Eric at. I think it was Hellfest or Vakken, one of the two. Doesn't matter. Do I remember? Night. Nah. But, uh. <laughs> Were you having too many beers, Rob? Or, or, I mean, that's what I heard. I don't know if. I don't, oh, I don't believe. Brad, Brad. I don't believe you it. fucking hell. You know me. <laughs> no beers in this house. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> yeah. You know. I, I, I'm tired. I'm tired of that fucking stigma. Yeah. yeah, I'll give me beer. And I want a raspberry, vanilla, chocolate, peanut butter, <laughs> oatmeal, <laughs> straight up stout. Yeah, you know, me. we're... The, the, the address is... <laughs> and that's the thing, you know, we, you know, um, you know, I had somebody recently that I, it's an acquaintance, somebody I'd never met, you know, brought up this, you know, the whole fact of, you know, this whole and I'll just I'll I'll address the you know the elephant in the room. So you know we 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 all like you know dabbling in drinking beer. That's that's you know we're adults. That's what we can do. You know, mm-hmm. um, but you know I had somebody say something in a negative fashion about Robert having an alcohol problem, and um, hoping that he can uh, put out an album worthy. Uh, or some you know nonsense like that, and I won't name who it is. But I just thought to myself, that's kind of a fucked up you know thing to call somebody out because, at least to my knowledge, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't James Hetfield uh, an, uh, an an alcoholic and who's gone to treatment on multiple loca- uh, occasions? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And 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 I would never think of him in any other terms because I don't know him and I don't care. Yeah, you know it's it's not my life. It's not my situation. I don't, you know, like somebody that is you know struggling or somebody that's just that's their lifestyle. Like what that has nothing to do with me. So I don't understand why people are so obsessed with other people's <laughs> extracurricular activities. Like you know, there's people you know that are heroin addicts and and dying constantly in the music scene. But they're somehow, you know, praised as, you know, all these other people. It, it Addiction is a fucked up situation, you know, and to calling somebody out on something is, uh, to me, is completely ridiculous because there's musicians in the scene that are well respected that are uh, addicts are as they are right now or recovering, you know, so. Wait, wait, wait. Are we saying I'm an addict? No, hell no. Do I like my beer? Yes. And I'm going to put this fucking thing to rest. And we've done this before, Brad. Um, You know what? No more goddamn questions about if I drink beer or not. You know what? I'm going to drink one right now just because (laughs) it's being spoke about. Hey, I love drinking beer, man. And I'm drinking whiskey right now, as a matter of fact. All right, Jameson, what you got? Uh, Jack, Uh, uh, Jack Daniels, Tennessee honey, man. There oh, you go. that's right. You're Tennessee. You got to fucking represent. <laughs> <laughs> got to, man. Yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah, man. I, I. Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm going to put this to rest. Done. In the conversation. I will not have anybody ask me if I drink beer. 
Yeah, I do. When I'm out there grilling, I'm going to fucking fire up the grill. I'm going to have a fucking natty ass in my hand. Bam. None. Hell yeah. Yeah. Because we're we're adults and we can do what we want with our own lives. And if that's, that's you know, I, I, I don't uh, have to explain myself to anybody about anything. I mean, it's, it's silly to even have this conversation or to even have these, you know, things brought up in, in interviews, uh, you know, 20 years later, 15 years later about s- stories. I mean, I mean, I, I can imagine half the rock stars out there have way bigger stories than this. So. Oh, you have That's- no fucking clue. Like I said, I'm dropping this right now, done in a conversation. I don't want it ever to be brought up again, but I've been on the road. I've been out there. I've been with these people, and I've seen shit, and I'm going back to my fucking hotel room going, damn. <laughs> okay. I said, damn. <laughs> Well, uh, you <clears throat> you mentioned uh, missing missing a chance to uh, see Eric, and it makes me think um, because, like, actually, he was one of the first major interviews that I ever did when I got into doing radio, and he was such a cool dude, and uh, I became friends with him on Facebook, and and we stayed friends throughout the years, and when I saw that they were going on tour with the Skull here recently. I kept thinking, you know what, I need to reach out to him and get another interview, you know, and get a follow-up and talk to him again and see what's going on. And then it's just like, you know, like you said, man, just bam, it just fucking happened out of the blue. And it's like, fuck, man, you know, like sometimes you you wish that you would uh, jump on that when it, when you, when, you know, when you have the chance and, ah, man, sucks. No, well, see. Here's the thing, man. You got to do it. Sometimes you feel like a pussy. Sometimes you feel like, man, I'm going to fuck, fuck, fuck. You know, and you don't do it. And the next day you're like, son of a bitch. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Speaking of influences earlier, you guys were talking about, uh, can you tell us what, what are some of the influences that got you guys into playing music? Why don't you take that one, Rob? Well, let's see. 1978. I was all of eight years old. <laughs> I said, Mom, let's go see the Cheap Trick concert. Bam. Booticon tour. Right? And so, apparently, I could sing. I don't know. <laughs> One of them goddamn things. <laughs> oh, and yes, if you haven't noticed, I do curse. So, my bad. <laughs> hey, it's all good, man. It's internet radio. But yeah, cheap trick. And uh, told Brad the other day, what, 78, 79, Dynasty Tour? Bam. Mom took me. Ace Freely's my bra of a pal. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for me, you know, Kiss is the probably the biggest reason that I wanted to become a musician you know i remember opening the you know the vinyl for kiss alive 2 looking in the inside of that and just going that is the reason that that to me is the coolest thing i've ever seen you know at that age you know and i was just blown away by everything that they were doing visually and you know you know Musically, it wasn't, you know, the the most intricate stuff, but they did what they did, and in the songs were catchy, and, you know, I mean, more for me, visually, but that's really the... Well, Brad, you have to go, amen, to fucking kiss, because that's what they fucking did. And like you said, musically, eh, we can all play four chord, bar chords in the same position all day long. Does yeah. it matter? No, it doesn't matter, because they did it, and we fucking sucked it up. <laughs> You know, I was, you know, I've, I, I've always gone through phases of things that, you know, are, are uh, you know, 
musically interesting or whatever but you know I, i'm a big fan of maiden and priest obviously and you know the black sabbath was one of the you know the biggest bands back in the day that i listened to and was just mesmerized by the you know the dark lyrics and the slow brooding music you know obviously they're the pioneers of that you know but i but i like a little bit of everything you know and uh obviously you know being in a band with Robert now, I mean, Candlemass was, you know, a huge back in, you know, the mid to late 80s. And then, you know, listening to, you know, Solitude and, you know, the early 90s was, you know, one of my favorite bands out of any band, period. I mean, not just because I'm in a band with Robert, but just in general. I mean, Solitude was, you know, I remember going to the record store and, and finding the cassette tape of uh, beyond the crimson horizon and i bought it just because of the cover you know you can't listen to stuff you know like you do nowadays and you yeah. know check it out on the internet so i just bought it because the cover was cool and uh you know the first time i listened to it you know seeds of the desolate i was just like wow that's that's the shit right there like in 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 turned out to be one of my favorite singers ever period top 10 singers of mine you know ever so all right thank you bro uh top 10 let's see am i nine or eight where the fuck is this <laughs> i still want you to record a next album so i'm not going to tell you what your rating is <laughs> <laughs> i love you bro it's pretty um, high up there though but you know you know there's well there's... you know what though here's the thing and i will put this on grief collector whatever i fucking do it's you know what? This fucking matters. And Matt and Brad, well, Brad. That's good stuff. Yeah, you know, we just we we do what we do and you know, I I I think the influences come, you know, I think Matt's is you know, Matt's a big kind of power metal guy. Uh, you know, he loves a lot of that kind of... Uh, yeah, but see, that's what helps us when he mixes it. Because the mixes are fucking phenomenal. He's got an ear for it. That's for yeah. sure. I, I would I would be totally... Like, if I mixed it, you, you wouldn't hear any guitar. It would just be a big, bombastic <laughs> drum solo. <laughs> yeah, Peter Chris. Bam. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah, dude. I got to say, man, like, you know, I, I love so many different uh, genres of music. and But Candlemas was was always definitely big, big in my uh, growing up, man. When I, I remember whenever they changed vocalists, I, my first thought was, oh, fuck, you know, like, oh, God. what is When this? did they not change vocalists? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, from Messiah, you know. Cause that's that. Was yeah, the well, no, Messiah that, is fucking great. Unfortunately, that, I've never met him, but I would love to. But I have things and stories in my head that I know about the guy, which I won't repeat. But, dude, Messiah. I mean, first of all, Nightfall, bam. Yeah. There it goes. You yeah. know, SA is in rehearsal. You know, it's what eighty eight. 89 I don't know I don't give a fuck and uh, dude comes in you gotta hear this album I'm like dude fuck kills man because you think about 88 it's like what the hell was going on besides pussy music right mm-hmm. bam you gotta fucking do this <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 definitely man but I mean, when you came in though, Rob, and you did fucking uh, when I heard "Emperor of the Void," right away, man, I was like, "What the fuck, man? This is fucking amazing, dude! Love it." Well, that's when somebody had to step in and go, "If hey, CMAS, if y'all want to be doomed, <laughs> let me do it." <laughs> Well, it, you know, to me, King of the Grey Islands just stepped up the game. I mean, it, yeah. the, produ- the production, I think, was better than a lot of the Candlemas prior stuff. Well, uh, they went to, well, a guy unnamed. We went to this other dude. And he's like, yeah, I can tump this up. Wow. And the, it's just the stronger vocals. I mean, Rob, I mean, for me, you know, and like I've said, you know, in many interviews, too, I mean, that 
you know, King of the Grey Islands, by far, it, it's hard to beat as far as a Candlemass album. Whether you like, you know, Messiah or, you know, or whoever you like as the vocalist for that band, I mean, it's it's hard to not say that's one of the best Candlemass albums out there. Well, I have to give props to Leif. I mean, Leif at the time, he wrote the shit. You know, it's not all me. All I do is fucking open my face in front of a mic in a fucking booth. Me? I ain't shit. I don't... Fuck me. Right? But Leif had it. And as far as I'm concerned, it's a good album. I mean, you know, everybody involved. Fucking Mape. Fucking Lars. Bam. Fucking Yane. The whole goddamn fucking crew was there. And that's what it was. Yeah. I mean, it, it takes, a, you know, it takes... It's not just one person for sure, but I mean, it, it's a very cohesive album, and you know, it's 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 to me it still stands the test of time. Is probably one of my favorite albums, you know, in the catalog of Rob. Just you know, anything that he's done, you know, even the some of the Solitude stuff. I I still think that King of the Grey Islands is is really a hard to top. It's 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 a great 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 album. Yeah, it is, man. It, it definitely. Thank is. you, bro, and thank you, sir. Uh, looking yeah. looking back on your careers, uh, do you have any like standout moments or or any crazy backstage stories or anything like that that you want to tell? Well, let's see. First of all, if I had a ghost writer and a book, I could tell you a lot of goddamn things. But when it comes to it, dude, the uh, time spent on stage and with my brothers and Matt and Brad are my brothers I fuck this corona bullshit um yeah I want to be on stage I want to do this shit no my my um time spent spreading the word <laughs> it's all that matters did yeah, I answer what? the question? I don't think so. <laughs> no, not really. You you did a total pretty Robert Lowe answer to that one, but you know, I you know, I in all honesty, you know, I've been playing music for a long time and haven't really played a lot of shows, you know. We have nothing of, you know, great quality or, you know, anything of that nature unfortunately. Um, you know, it's just just been pretty low key, you know, a lot of just Minnesota shows. Um, you know, with some great bands from here, but nothing, you know, nothing uh, international or nothing, you know, very large or anything like that. You know, me and Matt are just, you know, two guys who just work normal jobs during the day and, you know, try to, you know, uh, write some good music, you know, on our time off. And, and that's really what it is. You know, that's just we're not full time musicians and we just kind of just, you know, when we get free time, we we try to dabble in, you know, the doom realm and see you know that's really the truth you know we uh you know we work full-time jobs and do our thing and um you know we're hoping that one day we can you know get on stage with robert you know and uh well, show, see, pe show people what we got thing. truth is what is bam r.i.p here love you you know i have to put that out there my condolences but uh yeah it's gonna happen bro period in a conversation. Well, we definitely look forward to seeing you guys on the road at some point, if it ever happens. Hopefully, it will happen. I mean, fuck, it's got to. Yeah, I mean, we have we have a couple things we can't quite announce at the moment for next year, so we're hoping they come to fruition. But you know, with the world being upside down half the time, you know, you never know what's going to happen. But you know. As of right now, we got uh, a couple things in the works as far as possible, you know, on stage stuff. Um, you know, we got Robert, you know, coming hopefully to Minnesota next month. Um, you know, uh, hopefully uh, for Rob, a little bit l longer right stay. Amen. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, you know we start working on this third album, and uh, you know I, everything happens for a reason, and we you know we'll just take it as it comes. You know we. We got kicked down by, you know, coronavirus, and we still put out a pretty damn good, you know, Doom album. So we're not going to we're not going to let that stop us again. You know, we'll just kind of just roll with the punches. 
Hell yeah. Hell yeah. All right. Well, guys, I'm about out of questions for you. Is there anything else you want to let the people know? Buy that damn album. <laughs> no. Well, yeah, if you, you, got, know you know what, it. though? I mean, seriously. Great selector. Fucking album's great. Oh, I have to say that because part of it. But you know what? God damn it. It is. It is. If I was to be a listener on the other side of the planet, I'd be, fuck, this is cool. So, with that said, and to recreate Brad's words, buy the motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, in all honesty, we want to thank everybody that's, you know, that has uh, been supportive with this project and you know everybody that has you know said some a lot of kind words man i'm telling you some really you know really positive stuff you know and it's hard you know in the music scene but there's so much competition there's you know so many things that have you know this that have been done you know this you know like i said we're not recreating anything new we're you know we're just doing what we do and you know it, it's nice when people recognize that that you know they 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 know that it's true to what we're doing you know and uh i think that's the coolest thing about this is that there has been so much good feedback you know and we and we thank everybody that's you know has reached out to us and and feel free to reach out to us you know message us you know and you know we talk to everybody we we answer our own you know messages on facebook we talk to people you know if we can help people find the cd or the album you know i go out of my way to you know look on sites and then message them back with the, you know links for it so you know uh we're we're here if you want to reach out to us and we're you know we're more than happy to uh get this album to you guys and you know it is on all the streaming sites um as well too so you can get it on Bandcamp digitally and um but it, it is is out there but um I'll, I'll try to you know see what i can find out for everybody especially for you zach hell yeah man i appreciate that and that is cool that you do uh what you mentioned about talking back to people on facebook and shit like that because you commented back on my comment on your post you know when i saw that you guys were recording new music i was like yeah and we started talking and then that's how this interview happens so for sure man for anybody out there listening talk to these guys man they'll talk back yeah you know well, I, I, i'll say this right now thank you for having us on your time because we do you know i know brad matt i did we go out of our way to make sure the metal community done and you talk and say hey bro because we're all fucking you know the dudes <laughs> that were listening to maiden or sabbath you know, when we were all 10, 12 years old, that I can, you know, it's got to grow. Yeah, we, you know, we, we feel it's important to, you know, because I know a lot of bands don't, you know, they're bigger bands. Uh, I get that. Nobody's answering their things, but, you know, we, you know, it goes right to our thing, you know, right to our phones or right to our, you know, laptops. So we, we, we answer everything if we're, you know, if it's possible to, you know, Sometimes it's out of our hands, you know, especially working with the record label. You know, our first album was done, you know, by ourselves. We did everything. We shipped everything out ourselves. So, you know, we printed everything here ourselves. So it's a little bit different, you know, with trying to pull some punches with the new album. But, you know, I'll do whatever it takes if I can to, you know, get this into people's hands and, you know, and stuff like that. So definitely, uh, you know, if anybody's interested, you know, hit us up. Even if it's just a bullshit about music or drinking beer, hit us up. Hell yeah. Raspberry stout vanilla <laughs> chocolate penis. <laughs> what is that? Is that a drink? <laughs> so, so a little, little backstory. No, I got a fucking Raz Brad, man, because I love Brad, right? Yeah, I do. I got to fuck with him. So a little backstory on that, Zach. So when when Robert flew in to Minnesota for the well for the first album, which was like 2019, I believe it was January. It was about negative 25 here. Not even yeah. joking. Holy shit! Not even. I'm not even being facetious at all. It was. It was and the no. And I showed up in fucking flip flops and shorts. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> but so, you know, at that point, Robert and I kind of, you know, we had never, never met before. So we kind of, you know, started, you know, just getting to know each other and, you know, started, you know, having some beers and stuff like that. So I'm not a huge like standard beer drinking guy. Like I don't like your standard IPAs or your hazy you know, bullshit stuff like that. You know, I, I'm not, I'm not going to drink a Miller light or anything like that. You know, um, <laughs> you know, I, I like stouts and porters. I like the darker, yeah. you know? So, um, last time Robert flew in, uh, for recording in delirium, you know, him and I went out and I said, Hey, you know, there's, there's these beers that, you know, like peanut butter Porter, you know? And, uh, so, um, you know, I got us a couple four packs and, you know, I converted, you know, the, you know, the Texan who likes his, you know, Natty Ice, you know, and I got him kind of hooked on this peanut butter beer, you know, that, uh, you know, is, is, is just, you know, dark and, you know, and, and that's kind of kind of how things kind of you know went so we always talk about that peanut butter and he just adds a bunch of flavors because you know <laughs> beer it, it, it's kind of silly these days there's just so many you know it's like a <laughs> dessert in a can but yeah it is there's all <laughs> kinds of shit man but you know that's just kind of what we do you know you know i like my beer and i like it you know i want something different you know I, I, that's just kind of what i want well, and a lot of that stuff is strong like, man that, if you know me I'm going to fuck with you. It's going to happen. Plain and goddamn simple. Hey, and I, I, you know, bring it on, man. Bring it on. <laughs> well, I yeah. love Brad, man. I love Brad. I mean, yeah, I love you too, man. For the whole goddamn thing that just happened, it's fucking blessing. I mean, I, sh- fuck me. I still listen to the shit and go, that's some good stuff. Damn. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, well, there's more coming. Well, we appreciate your time, Zach. And, you know, like like I said, we do really appreciate you having us on here and, you know, taking the time to give us, you know, some uh, words and, you know, and tell people what's going on with us, you know, and it, it's, it's pretty cool to actually get this opportunity. Man, anytime, guys. Uh, before I let you go, can I get you to make us a station tag? Absolutely. No. All right. Whenever you're ready, say something like, this is Grief Collector, and you're listening to Metal Devastation Radio. Hey, this is Brad from Grief Collector, and you're listening to Metal Devastation Radio. Hell yeah. Was that right? Hell yeah. (laughs) Rob, you want to do one too? Hey, Zach. Thank you, bro. Appreciate your time. Killed it, and you will too. (laughs) Hell yeah, man. Well, thanks a lot for taking the time, guys, to talk to us, man. I really appreciate it. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to blast some more Grief Collector for these motherfuckers so they can go crazy, all right? Corridors! Hell yeah. We appreciate it, man. We'll talk to you soon. Cheers. We'll talk to you later. See ya. There you have it, folks. Grief Collector live on the Zach Moonshine Show with Metal Devastation Motherfucking Radio. Like I said earlier, put your speakers in your windows, put them in your front lawns, put them everywhere. If you don't see you all trucks all over the fucking street tomorrow, I don't know what the fuck you're doing, but you ain't cranking it up fucking like I am, dude. Crank it the fuck up loud. <laughs>